up your hands wherever you are. For the Lord is on the throne. Things are ready better. Things are ready better. Things are ready better. Oh, for the Lord is on the throne. Things are ready better. Things are ready better. Things are ready Lift up your hands. For the Lord is so His own. Things are ready. Already better. Things are ready. Better. Things are ready. Better. Father, we give you praise. We glorify your name. Let your name be glorified in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. A clap of friend and please be seated. Amen. For the Lord is on his throne. Things are ready. Better. Things are ready. Better. Things are ready. Better. Our strength. Thy grace. Thou. Thy word. Our end. The glory. We are the Lord. Captain of Israel, host and guide of all who seek the land above beneath thy shadow. We abide the cloud of thy protecting love, our strength. Thy grace, our rule, thy word, our rain, the glory, oh, the Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Kindly, let's go to Romans chapter 8. We are still dealing with purpose. Tell somebody purpose. Tell another person purpose. I don't think you hit the person sitting beside you. Just look at them nicely and tell them purpose. 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 Hallelujah. Tell another person you are in existence because of the purpose of God for your life. And you don't own this life. Oh, tell another brother, you don't own this life. But this life has been given to you by God to fulfill his purpose in your life. Hallelujah. And tell that person, I think you're looking pretty handsome, good, all around. Just, just be nice to the person sitting beside you. If you're single and you're sitting beside a single woman, be nice with your words, blood. Be nice, man. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And uh, let's read from 28 through. Last week, I ended somewhere to do with our predestination and foreknowledge. And foreknowledge simply means that you were known before you came into existence. Jeremiah, before you were a blood cloth in your mother's womb, I knew you. The very existence, the
the very being of who you are, Jeremiah, even before you step out of eternity into this present time, I know you. And by being foreknown, it means that everything with regards to God's purposes for your life is already in motion. You have to fall in line. Amen. You have to fall in line. When I was born, none of you was around. I didn't know anyone when I was born. But being foreknown by God meant that one of these days, if I take up the mantle to preach, I would definitely know you. And here you are. Hallelujah. So foreknowledge simply means that Everything about your life is known by God. Amen. And it is your responsibility and duty every now and then to go back to God or go back to the drawing board and ask God, why is this not working? If I'm foreknown, then it means that everything about me is already being prepared. It is not the fault of the creator or the one who foreknew you. It is the fault of the foreknown individual. Because if you become lazy about your purpose and the destiny of God for your life, life will frustrate you. Hallelujah. Life will defeat you. Life will task you with the negativities and the pain and every contrariness. Because any time you step out of your purpose, the enemy shows up. Jesus said, hey, the sower who went out to sow seed, some fell by the roadside. And immediately some fell by the roadside. The birds came and took the seed and ate the bird. And he explained it further that it represents individuals whose heart cannot take the word of God. And so when the word of God comes, immediately the word of God comes. They have no depth within themselves. The enemy steps up and said, as long as you don't have depth, I can take that which is yours. The roadside. Your purpose defines the limits of your life. To say that I'm going to be great, it is, it's in words. Your purpose is what gives significance to even your thought and your words and what you perceive. Your purpose saves you from jealousy. Your purpose saves you from being envious. The greatest footballer is yet to be born. What you see is all that you can see. But the greatest of all is yet to be. Am I speaking to somebody? Everything about man is found in the capsule of his purpose. And until you find your purpose, you will be purposeless. You'll be given to the whims of life. This is what is happening. You move there. This is what is happening. You get there. This is what they are doing. You get there. And so within that, a, a short space of time, within this limited life that you have as a human being, you will find out that you've wasted about 30 years of your life doing what? Chasing after vanity, which has got nothing to do with you. It is said that the first 30 years of your life determines the next 30 years. And the next 30 years determines the next 30 years. It is all hinged on the kind of environment you find yourself and you were raised in. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to propose to you and to tell you that you can change the effects of your environment if you so will. My father was not around. Paul said when I was a man. When I was a child, I used to think like a child. Now that in spite of the fact that my father was not around when I was growing up, now I've become a man, I'm a woman. The results of the next level of my life is dependent not on what my father did or didn't do. It's dependent on what I think of me and what I do with the resources I've been given. Am I speaking to somebody? It's dependent on what I do with what I've been given. 
what I do with the next person. I call a brother or sister. What, what I do with that individual. What I do with the next book. What I do with the next thought. New knowledge that I'm introduced to. Because people, until you find your purpose. I mean, we are quite familiar with this statement that the devil gives work to the idol hunts. You are too busy chasing after your purpose. You have no time for stupidity and nonsensical. And for those of you who are under 30, the best years of your life, don't waste it. Doing things that will produce nothing. Because when you get to 30, 30 years, you will know soon you'll be 40. I came to London when I was 24. I'll be 40 next year. 4-0. It means I'll soon be 50. Amen. Regardless of how old you are, add 20 years to it. Like I said, some of you are shocked. Because when you add 20 years to your life, you'll be too old. Add 20 years to your age right now. Most of you don't want people to know. But in your, I, I keep telling people that lie about your age. One day, when we start experiencing SSB, do you know SSB? Sasabro. When you start experiencing the pain, and you will know you are old. Am I speaking to somebody? Be careful. The Bible said redeeming the times. Buying back the time. Taking the time back. Redeeming the time because the days, the time that you waste won't be a time you would have again. When you are young, people tell you what to do. From zero to pro possibly there. In this country, they say when you're 18, you're an adult. In Africa, it doesn't work. Even if you are 60, your father can look at you and go, stupid boy. And you're like, but I'm 60, so what? How I speak to somebody? They say when you're 18, you're an adult. And, and, and it's a big lie. Because the economic situation right now does not give credence to that statement. In the olden era when human beings were not a lot in the industrial era where after you finish they get you a job and by 18 you can rent. Now go and rent and see. 30 you are still hanging on to your mom. Mom what did you cook? Get out there blood. Go and rent and start cooking yourself. It doesn't work. Am I speaking to somebody? Your purpose. Your purpose. And there's nothing like old age when it comes to the definition of a person's purpose. Ray Kroc was 52 when he started life for real. 52. Kennel Sanders. You go to KFC and you want the central part of the chicken. Hell, hell. The man was advanced in age when he caught the revelation. So nobody here has an excuse. But we all have an opportunity. Tell somebody, now I know. That in Christ, I have an opportunity. Hallelujah. And so it is your responsibility to find out what your purpose is. And I'm intentionally not defining what or giving you how to discover your purpose. I'm intentionally doing that. Because oftentimes people are great. Oh, so how do I find what, what is my purpose? I see pastor, the one that gave birth to them. If your father cannot tell you what your purpose is, or your mom cannot help you define it, you are in trouble. I want to speak this out. So we, we talked about the fact that five parameters or things that every now and then you have to pause and ask yourself these questions. Because if you're able to ask yourself these questions, please understand that you can lie to everyone, but you cannot lie to yourself. Hello? You can lie to everyone. Lie to everyone. But you cannot lie. Shakespeare says that uh, the construction of the mind cannot be found on the face of a person. The real you is what goes in there. It doesn't matter what you project in the outward. Hallelujah. And so it calls for an introspective search. Of your priorities, of your vision, of your dreams, of your aspirations. The ability to be honest with yourself. Hello? And then come out with a conclusion. And then you present that conclusion to the Holy Ghost. And you said, God, what are you saying about this?
Is this the real me? Have I delayed time with what you gave me? Have I wasted opportunities? But the good news is that in Christ, you can always be given the power and the ability. God is generous enough to give you the resources to connect you to the right people, to push you with the right wing into the right place for his purpose, which he has for you to be manifested. There's nothing called time wasting when the time is used to serve God. When I went for favor campaign, there was a young man who is now being trained in church. I didn't know I'd even said that when I was in Ghana in 2008. I saw the young people there. I said, listen, you guys. And I saw him. I said, give yourself the next five years. There will be a change of levels with all these friends. And in five years time, you will define the context of your life. When I went for favor campaign, he said, Pastor, do you remember that in 2010, you said that? I said, yes. Because I'd seen one of the young men, and the guy was stoned. You don't know stone blood. The guy was drunk, and I think he had, had some reefers or spliff. And, the, and I said, I saw this guy there. He said, ha, huh, have you forgotten what you said? I said, what did I say? He said, you said that in five years' time, there will be a definition. Can I speak to somebody? Put your feet in the right place. And in a few days to come, God will define your life. People, we are not in church to waste a while away time. We are in church because we find out that we are the sheep of Christ's pasture. We are the sheep of his pasture. And we are not ourselves until we find ourselves in him. And it doesn't matter the wasted years. Once you find yourself in Christ, he starts you over with the best. I see God starting somebody over with the best. In the name of Jesus. It's not about the years you've wasted. It's not about what somebody has said about you. It is about you coming face to face with what God has said about you. Jeremiah, Isaiah had been a prophet for many years, but no significance. Isaiah chapter 6. He was one of the prophets or the priests, priests that used to serve in the temple for many, many years. No significance. No significance. Isaiah, no significance. Did everything he had to do. Fast and pray. Did everything. That one day the Bible said, King Uzziah died. And the year King Uzziah died. Isaiah appeared in the temple. Then God appeared to him. You don't waste time in Christ finding your purpose. It doesn't matter the years it will take. As long as you're faithful with what God. Now, now, now. People, I used to lead praise and worship here. I used to. I used to lead prayers. Finish. When I see uh, Minister Andre, I'm laughing. I said, oh. Now some young boys are doing what I used to do. Not that I'm that much older than... I used to lead praise and worship. I used to lead prayers. And sometimes I used to preach. Lead prayers, lead praise and worship. And preach. When I finish, then I'll prophesy. And people say, brother, hallelujah. Uh, about, about 2001, the same place. Thought I was wasting it? No. I wasn't. Bible declares that whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with all. Now, the reality is that many people in ministry and in life don't want to do it with all their might. They just get, get deceived by the success story of, 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 of the renowned people. In the, oh, Mark Zuckerberg just stumbled on, the, on, on Facebook. He didn't stumble on Facebook. Oh, Microsoft, Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard. Now, if his parents were not that wealthy, how would he have ended up in Harvard? And so you want to drop out. Be the child of an African parent, you will know. So you heard these things and you I also want to drop out. Ha. Brother, when they dropped out, they had a strong backing. Am I speaking to somebody? And no wealthy parent would allow their child to drop out of college without sitting down with them and telling them, listen, we are giving you a year. After a year, if you don't make it, you are going back. So you heard, oh, 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 these people dropped out so much. You can also drop out. They will drop out and life will drop them out. Hallelujah. You can't waste your time pursuing 
your purpose. What I've learned over time, this is, uh, I'm just deviating a stat. If you spend your time pursuing that which is not in your destiny, you will be bitter. Amen. Because Mr. A has done it. So you also think that you can do it. You will end up being bitter in life. Number two, if you spend the best of your years pursuing that which is not in your destiny, you end up in poverty. Am I speaking to somebody? Spend the best of your years, best of your days. There were days I could stand on my feet and pray for five hours. No baby, no marriage, no woman, no wife. I could pray for year, for hours, several hours. Now I'm married. I'm a responsible. I have to be responsible. Am I speaking to somebody? So I look at Benjamin all the time. I said, brother, pray. <laughs> pray. Pray. Before you stand here saying I do, without even knowing what you're doing. And you end up, by the time you, you don't even know what you're doing, there's a baby. I want to speak to somebody. And your responsibilities begin to increase. So, between foreknowledge and predestination, I said that as the context of your life. Of your life. God has generously given you that life. And I said the other day on Twitter that you are powerful simply because you have a will. And within the context of your will is the power of your choice. That makes man powerful. God cannot even stop the dictates of your will. But every now and then he creates opportunities for you to be smart with the will which is given you. You have the power to choose. And choose wisely. Hello? You have the power to choose. And choose wisely. When I was getting get married, a wise man called me and said, Don't marry a woman you love. Marry a woman you like. I was like, ha. Ah. We were raised to believe that love is everything. He said, hey, love, you can fall out of love. You can fall in love. But if you marry a woman you like, it doesn't matter what she does, not what he does. Men don't do anything. Women cause all the trouble. Amen. He said, it doesn't matter what she does. Since you like her, you would love her. Choose wisely. Am I speaking to somebody? So between foreknowledge and predestination is your life. And everything about you is in the book. David said for the intricate part of my body. Everything was woven. I, I'm, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully. He said in the book. In Psalm, 80, Psalm 89. Psalm, 1, Psalm 89. Right? He said in the book that is written of me. Hey, I said lo. I came in the volumes of the book that is written of me. To fulfill and to do your will. So there's a book about you. And there's a book about me. And when you give your life to Jesus, God flips the pages and begins to show you the real you, your real life. Some of you, all that you need to do is to come into contact with God and the real you will be shown to you. Hallelujah. And so the last thing we have to discuss today is the question of if I know where I'm from, the question there are two more. It's that, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do relates to your potential. Everyone sitting here has a potential. For God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. A measure of potential. In my little science, I remember that they said kinetic energy and potential energy. Potential energy is, an, is the energy possessed by a stationary object. It does nothing. It has the energy. But it's still stationary. The other one is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is simply the energy possessed by a body in motion. People listen, if you stay where you are, you will still be the same. But if you dare make the move, things change. Things change. The four lepers at the city gate in the city of Samaria, they were lepers. They caught the revelation 
They caught the revelation that, listen, let's move. Let's, uh, if we stay here, we are going to die. We are going to be hungry. And, and these people will even overrun us and kill us. And one said, why don't we just make that move? If we get into the camp, if they kill us, we are dying anyway. What if they don't kill us? Can I speak to somebody? You've been marking time for far too long. You've been marking time. There's an old English adage. It says, one of, the, one of these days means none of these days. One of these days means none of these days. You said you were going to do it. When we are confessing, you are confessing. We are still waiting. You think everything should be alright before you make a move? Life does not afford man that right. There is nothing called everything being equal. Nothing is ever equal yet ordinary people took charge of what they have and turned things around i prophesy over somebody's life receive the grace and the anointing to do even when you don't have to make that move when you are convicted by the holy ghost for god is with us to move us from glory to glory for the spirit listed the spirit listed where it moves the holy ghost moves where it listed don't wait the spirit is moving just tap into the spirit and let him move you you're wasting time. You're marking time. Soon you'll be too old for that which you should have done. And you see, what you have to do now, if you don't do it now and you wait, you will lose your resources. Because once God re re reveals the revelation, understand he's also sent resources. Hello? Once God releases the revelation, you did not just wake up in the morning and thought, Okay, today I want to be a designer and I have the concept and I have the idea. And the, the thing kept burning in your spirit. And, and wherever that day it consumes you, the next day, do you think you just conjured that idea? No, 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 no. God wants to lift you out of the pain and the frustration and the lack. And whenever God wants to send prosperity, he does not send money. He sends ideas. Hello? Am I helping somebody? Tell somebody I think he's teaching. He does not send money. If you God send me money, money. Whose money should God send to you, blood? He sends you an idea. An idea. God works with ideas. Remember you are an idea and the thought processes of God. When God did what? Released you into manifestation. So it's a lie that oh, I'm waiting, you know. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You just have to get off and do what you have to do. Before one day you wake up and there's something called old age. David was 17. He yielded. God used him. Jesus was 12. He yielded. God used him. Moses, Moses was 80. When God used it. People listen. If you think you have tomorrow. I don't know. Tomorrow is given to us by grace. Hello. What you have to do. With the little resources. Start it. Nothing starts great. The Bible declares you shall not despise the day. Of your small what begin? I don't. I do. He said, "Who are the spies? The day of small beginnings, or small beginnings, the day of small beginnings, the day of small beginnings." So you thought that it had to be big, then suddenly people know you, and you become your guy, my guy at the top. How many saw that viral? And you think it would happen that way? I'm sorry, you're in the wrong place. If you think by praying hard, as people say, I have to pray and fast. You can fast and be skinny. You can pray. And if you don't embark on the purpose which God gave to you alone, with that little which he starts with, you'll be marking time. And you'll be very bitter very soon. Because you know what God does? If you don't do it, he gives it to a neighbor. Who does it excellently. And he uses that as an image of jealousy. To provoke you that. If you are listen to what I was saying. And pursue that. This is where you could have been. Your potential. Potential. 
potential. In the everyday English, potential pro- pro- I, I, I added, uh, probably will be latent ability. An ability that is yet to be taught. And there are many of us here, people in the internal, uh, my best teachings, people don't show up. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. I don't understand. When you say, the, you will prosper, the whole church will be, but, but this is what, <laughs> okay, am I helping somebody? Latent ability. Having the ability, who cares? Who cares? So, and so, the next person also has the same ability. And they're doing everything they can to unearth it. You are sitting and waiting. Waiting for who? Living in a country where that the economy, even when the economy is worse, it is like our economy in Africa becoming better. Africa is a failed state, straight up. Failed. We just failed. And God is waiting on a generation like ours. A generation like ours. It's a failed state. Nothing worse. And I was having a discussion with my auntie and I said, gradually, African countries are facing out of the Olympics. Not because they don't have the potential, but because there's no investment. Nobody cares. The Nigerian kit came three days just when they were about to finish the Olympics. Three days. What they had to wear came three days to the time they were finishing the Olympics. Come on, boxing. Where somebody has has got to stand, you have to stand and kick them. We never lacked it. We never, Ghana could not even send a boxer. Africa is a failed state. And if you're an African here and you think you live in Europe and everything is okay, so let's forget them. The people back home will remind you. Am I helping somebody? So what can you do? What can you do? There's something about you that you've taken for granted. Every day you wake up in the morning, there's something that speaks to you first. Not even the Holy Ghost. The potential which God has given you. How do you write a vision? You don't, have, you don't need a lot of vocabulary. Take a small paper. I put your name there. This is what God has called me to do. Then you write it down. Every time you wake up in the morning, look at what you've written now. The next question is, how do I do what God, you've called me to do? Hello? There's something you can do. There's something about you. There's something unique about your life. And it's easy to take it for granted. It's easy to take it for granted. The most painful reality is to be praising others for what they do, excel in it, and achieve success whilst you sit on your potential. Yet we come to church and we lift up holy hands. When you say bold runs and wins, it glorifies God. Whoever taught you your theology has gotten it wrong. When a wealthy Christian shows up and Thanks God for how much they've been blessed. It glorifies God. I might speak of that. When a, a, a person, an engineer, designs, when you sit in my Mercedes, you will know there's a difference. Some of you are driving trucks. Some of us are driving cars. When a person sits down and designs a car, and you look at it and say, wow, look at that car. It glorifies God. Am I speaking to somebody? It glorifies God. Purpose. Purpose. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Apparently, Mugabe said most African women cannot go to Brazil for the Olympics because the Brazilian women will be demanding their hair. Mercy. Say mercy. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you are wearing somebody's potential. You did not design that glasses. What you are wearing, there's a name tag in there. To the point that when you go to Tesco, you did not cook that food, man. Am I helping somebody? If you fail, it's in the Bible. 
to work on your potential. You are equal, it is equal to being sent to hell. The king came, gave one five. The Bible said in Matthew 25, according to their several ability. The other got two, according to his several ability. The other got one, according to his several. Now, I always emphasize, they were servants. They were not from the royal line. They were not in the same stead as the king. They were not. They were not. So out of the king's generosity, he picked them up. I said, I want to bless your life. You see, every gift you have is God saying, I want to change your life and make you better. And make you better. That's what God is saying to you. The one who had five came back and said, King, you gave me five. Here's the five. You trusted me. You reposed enough confidence in me and gave me five. Here's the five. The one that had two came back, gave two. The one that had one according to his several ability. Came and said, you wicked king. You are a wicked one. Ghanaians, you say wicked. You looked at me and gave me one, but it was according to your several. And guess what he did? He buried it. And the Bible said, the king said, take what he has and send him to eternal domination. It will not be your portion, people. Your portion is in defining God's purpose for your life what can you do to make your life better understand that whatever you do if society appreciates it they don't come and hug you they pay you for any wealthy person you've seen around has worked on your potential manifested the results of your potential and you are paying for their potential and you're not different I remember the years when we used to preach with a wire on the microphone. So you had to have about 25 meters of wire. And sometimes you roll it if you want to go into the <laughs> Somebody sat down and said, the wire can be turned into a UHF, whatever frequency, developed it. And so we cut short the wire. Now cutting short the wire is called him being paid. So he was paid to cut short the wire. I don't know about you, but I feel there's something about you that can change your life. And that the danger is taking yourself for granted. And thinking, oh, not me. Him, her, yes, you. You have that gift, you have that potential. Yes, you. What can you do? Any gift God gives to you, he's saying, I'm picking you out of the miry clay and placing your feet upon the rock. I'm strengthening your ability to stand. Any opportunity, God sends a person's way. What he's saying is that I want to change your life. Allow me to change your life. Work with me because you're a co-creator. And every idea I have, when I give it to you, go out there and do something. Purpose. What can you do for you? What can you do for you? What can you do for yourself? There's something about you. For the gift of a man and a woman will do what? Number one, will make room. Making room simply means that your gift will allow you to be noticed by potential investors. Potential helpers. People who have the resources that you need. The gift of a man. Number one will make room. David before he became a king knew how to play the harp. He was playing the harp in the palace for King Saul. So when it was time for him to become a king, it was easy. God will always give you glimpses of where and who you can become. You have to take it and do something. Please listen. Listen. Don't waste these precious times that you have. For the gift of a man, the gift of a woman will make room number one. Great men have a place they meet. Great men are hunting for talents. Great men are hunting for skills. They are hunting for abilities. And if your gift makes room for, they appear in that place, 
and they pick you up and lift you up and help you get to the top. Until there's a gift, there wouldn't be a lifting. Your gifting is what gives birth to your lifting. And until your gifting is, is pronounced, there wouldn't be a lifting, people. There wouldn't be a lifting. You're crying poverty. You're crying pain. You're crying this. But there's something about you that can help you change your life. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I can't do what you were created to do. I can only do what I have identified as my ability to do. Am I speaking to somebody? There may be copycats, but the original. I mean, our women buy bags. When you know the one from China, you would know. Amen? Amen. Oh, yes. Now, Michael Kors is in vogue now. There's a big Michael Kors shop in MK. Whenever we are making with my wife, I said, look ahead. The spirit is in front. Don't look at Michael Kors. Look ahead. Michael Kors, when you know Michael Kors, the one from China, you will know. Nobody will sell a Michael Kors, an original, for the price of the coffee cup. Am I speaking to somebody? The original would always make money. The, 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 the biggest form of the money would always be made by the original. Nobody will sell a Michael Kors bag that costs about a thousand pounds in Dawson. So if you think you bought your bag from Dawson, forget it. That's not the original. What can I do? The next level of your life is dependent on what you can do for you. And until you do. David was a slinger, a harpist, and a worshiper, and a warrior. Then all. The king, King Saul, had offended God. And immediately the oil fell on David. The demon spirit came on King Saul. David came and he will worship. And I was telling Benjamin that until you are worship, you are able to worship for mad people to be seen. Until you are able to worship for cripples to walk, you are still climbing. Am I speaking to somebody? They needed somebody to kill Goliath. The same David appeared. I said this as meat for the birds. Pick up the sling. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? If you're using a phone called Samsung or Apple, there's a man called Samsung who's controlling your life. Amen? If you're always on Google, shout Google. If you're on Google, listen, a group of people sat down, came out with the algorithms. Somebody controls the limits of your information. What can you do for you? There's something you can do. I want to provoke you to be angry. Having a British passport or it's nothing. Yes, it's good, but that's it. Is that all your life is about? Living in London and taking pictures and putting on Facebook and sugaring to the left and to the right. Is that all your life is about? God is calling you and I to the place of maximizing our potential. Because there are greater rewards in us maximizing our potential. The best of your life is on the other side of you maximizing your potential. Hello. The best of God for your life is hidden the other side. And until you discover, so what can you do? Ask somebody, what can you do for you? Oh, talk to me. Tell somebody, what can you do for you? There's something you can do for you. Tell somebody, there's something you can do for you. And that you have to find it. Amen? The ways by which God alerts you. Next week, I'll teach on the five parameters. Number one, it can be a skill. Something you easily don't sweat. People sweat for it, but you can easily do it. We talked about potential. It can also be a, a talent. I don't know the key for me when I begin to sing. All I know is that 
Once I step, you give me the microphone. I will sing. I've never bothered by F, Q, B, C. I don't know. Others will struggle. Give me B, 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 B. Then they start. Eh, no, no, no. Make it A, 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 A. Madman. <laughs> How much we get this? I just get, give me the microphone. Because I always allow the Holy Ghost to lead me. Give me the microphone. When I stand there, I will sing easily. Some of you, you've never learned how to sow, but you can cut materials and make sense out of that material. Amen? There's a whole lot you can do. And I've met people who are born with natural, God-given gifts. They, they didn't need to sweat or learn anything. They just had to do it, and they were doing it. Your work or your job is not your purpose. Seldom, if you take a hundred people, I can tell you confidently, there will only be two people who are uh, maximizing their purpose with the kind of work they do. Only about two. The rest, we just have to make ends meet. You wake up in the morning, you're angry. You don't like to go to work. What God called you for is also lurking deep in your spirit. Who are you angry at? Who are you angry at? Your friends are telling you you can make good food. And in their parties they invite you. Make food for us. You make it. You package it. What is God trying to tell you? Your friends can tell you, you know how to dress. Do you know what they are telling you? You know how to combine your colors. They are telling you something. And you wake up in the morning, get up, and you're angry at your manager. Your manager hasn't done anything. God is using your manager to provoke you to go back to the drawing board. You think it's late. It is not late. Your friends are telling you, you, you have the gift of the God. You can stand and talk. Do you know what they are telling you? Maybe you can be a great host or a hostess and you get paid for it. See, the painful reality now, uh, uh, Donald Trump said something that African Americans should try him and what the hell have they, sorry to you, they got to lose. One of my friends, I said, shut up, shut up. What is wrong with what he said? We are the only people who never accept it's our fault. It is always somebody's fault. It is always somebody's fault. It is, all, it is easy. After so many years of uh, what we, slavery, you still have same thinking human beings in my time. Blaming slavery. My grandfather, I came to meet my grandfather. He wasn't a slave. I asked him, is, was your father a slave? He said no. I said, was your grandfather a slave? He said no. I came to meet my great grandmother. I, I saw her. She wasn't a slave. She was a wealthy woman. Up until now. So guess what? We are the only people that never accepts it's our fault. So I said, if he tells them the truth, which he's telling them, you don't like, and painfully we don't like being told the truth. Who are you to tell me the truth? I like my life. And then he, and he, oh, it's so. I, I mean, we all, most of us are Africans, and, and people say, "Oh, it's so." And in, 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 in Ghana or in Nigeria, it's okay there. It is not okay. Potentiality is less. Nothing happens there. That's what you think is okay. Hello. Nothing happens there. There's no system of order. People are doing nothing. That's why you think when you go back home, it's okay. It's not okay. If it were to be okay, why do you run back, man? Can function in that environment. It's like you look at them and think, are, are you okay? He said, we are okay, man. What can you do? <laughs> what can you do? Ask somebody, what may I do? Now, in, in nursery, uh, many years ago, it said, good, better, best. May I never rest. How many Ghanaians continue? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. See, see, see. Good, better, best. May I never rest. 
until my good is better and I better. You know the reality? Most of us are resting now when we are not meant to. Rest. Can't take anything serious. I joke us with our lives. Can't be serious with God. Can't be serious with our potential. Can't be serious with anything. You're like a zombie going through life. Like somebody who's been fed a placebo. And you wake up in the morning and it's always this. Where are you going? I don't know. Jack, where are you? I am here. And you're everywhere. And they can't define your place. And a double-minded person is an anathema to the word of God. It will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I said it will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. West in the Wasting your days. Stupid friends. Wrong relationship. Listen people. Listen. Listen. Your relationship is half your life. Evil communication will corrupt the good manners you've been raised with. The fact that we are in church does not mean I can marry you. Let me be honest with you. Marriage is half your destiny you. If you marry the wrong bubble, for the rest of your life, you will smell pepper. But he's my friend, and, 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 and the person has no significant influence to where you're going. Choose friends based on where you're going. Friendship is not by force. Friendship is by choice. The right kind of friend will set you up. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Any wrong friend in your life, today I command a separation. Friendship is by choice. It's not by force. Where you are going should tell you who you should relate to. And if your friends are all miscreants, and if your friends are all loafers, lazy people, talkers, you end up, Hi. end up, Losing the best of your years. To what? To nothing. What can you do? I can stay on what can you do till Jesus comes. But what can you do? Your potential. What can you do? Please, for the last time, ask the person sitting beside you. What can you do? Turn to another person and ask them. What can you do? That you are not doing. People, your fulfillment is in alignment to what you can do. Anytime, any Sunday I finish preaching and I get home. Or in church I ask the people, were you blessed? They said, I was blessed. Where, what do you mean you were blessed? They explained, Pastor, when you said this, I am fulfilled. Guess what? I'm doing what I've been called to do. And eventually, I'll be blessed. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. And because of what I do, some of you bless. And some of you have not blessed me in a long while. You are delivered. You are delivered. Am I, am I speaking to somebody? Tell somebody again, what is it that you can do that you're not doing? Ha! Two or three friends can get together and open a restaurant. I'm yet to see people eating Irishu. Now, these Asians walking, they're walking, and all kinds of chapati. You shake your head and you are busy. Uh, what, what, which one again? Name it. Name it. Huh? You take your money. Have you ever seen Chinese people going anywhere and getting employed by anyone? No. Just buy rice and international food. And you call, uh, can I order some Chinese? May it be said that one day somebody will call and say, Hi, can I order some Ghanaian food? Can I order some yam and palava sauce and spinach and kopi? Shh. Salted fish. <laughs> May they call and say, I feel like eating fufu, fufu, a light soup. And you send it by Korea, delivery, and they take it to them. Two, three friends can gather and say, Listen, we can design African clothes. Now it's all over.
People are work. Now, I saw somebody. Somebody has designed an app for the Entamam African Women Wear app with designs. All you have to do, download the app, look at it, tap on it, and choose the style and order it. Give them the correct sizes and soon you'll be having it. I walked into Topshop one day and I saw many years ago the African cloth being designed and being sold in Topshop for some money when if you go to an African seamstress, you will fight with them never to pay that money. But you walk into Topshop and go and buy it. What can you do? If you waste your years, you'll be very bitter with life. You'll be so bitter with life, you would believe some witches have been chasing you. No witch has been chasing you. In fact, when you are in your purpose, you are secured and protected. They can't get to you when you are in your purpose. It is only in the walls, outside your purpose, that you get frustrated with all these. But a man that is pursuing, the Bible said, set your mind like flint, flint, a sharp stone, that this is my target. And until I get to that place, good, better, best, may I never rest until what we call good becomes better. Then I can rest. I see you get a name in the name of Jesus. I see you get a name in the name of Jesus. Kindly stand. For his mercies shall lift up your hands and begin to pray to God. Speak to God. Come on, speak to God. Come on, speak to God. Speak to God. Church, lift up your voice. Come on, speak to God. Speak to God. Let it go down. Let it go down. Come on, pray. Lift up your voice. In the few minutes that we've got left, God help me discover my purpose. God help me discover my purpose. God help me discover my purpose. God help me. Come on, let's pray. 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 Lift up your voice and pray. There's something about you. There's something. There's something purposeful about you. There's something about you that you can do. You're wasting too much time. Giving excuses here and there. Saying all kinds of things. Lift up your voice and let's pray. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. There's a potential in me. There's a potential in me. There's something about me. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Lift up your voice. Oh, there's something about me. There's something about me. There's something about me, Jehovah. There's something. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Let it be revealed. Let it Lift be revealed. Let it be revealed. Let, revealed. Let it be revealed. Let it be released. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Jesus. Lord, the best Come of me, the best of I me. I want to hear you pray. Let's of your voice. The best of me, the Come best of me, the treasures, the gift. Come on, let's let pray. Let it be uncovered. Let it be released. Come on, let's pray. Let it be exposed. Something exposed. about you. Lord, Something the best about of you. Me be in revealed. spite of all the let excuses. Be in let spite of all the excuses. Let your Something be about clear, you. Oh God. Let it be clear. Let it Come on, let's pray. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's pray. Open up your mouth. Begin to pray. Come on, let's pray. Lord, reveal. Lord, reveal. There's something about you. Reveal the things that belong to you. Let your will be revealed unto me. Lord, reveal the things that belong unto us. Every hidden potential. Every secret thing. 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 Every Pray, 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 pray. Lift up your hands. Lord, reveal, Lord, reveal. Lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone here has a potential. Amen. There's something about everyone here that you created them for. Where there's confusion, I bind confusion. In the name of Jesus. I release clarity. Jehovah, I release clarity. Sense a purpose. Sense of purpose. Sense of direction into their lives in the name of Jesus. That everyone here will find what they were created for. For those who are already in their potential, release the resources they need. Release the resources they need. Amen. Release the help that they need. Amen. And the writer declares that my redeemer shall come from Zion. Yes. My helpers shall come from Zion. Amen. God send their helpers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If anyone here is confused about their potential, let clarity walk into their lives. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. Amen.